so we proceeded with the hearing. My vocational lady could not be present. The hearing had been taken over for a couple of times. Judge Hurley suggested, let's take the testimony of a witness. We can come back and do um, the vocational another day. And she allowed defense counsel, if you want, you can hold off cross-examination until you come back. I wasn't pleased with that because now defense counsel has the opportunity to go through the transcript in fashion or uh, cross-examination accordingly. My was <coughs> for the better part of two hours in detail, embarrassing painstaking details about how this injury and subsequent disability affected her. <coughs> At the end of the hearing, when everybody was packing up to move, Judge Hurley, he called both parties to the uh, to the bench. We went up and she looked at the defense counsel and said, how do you expect me to knock her off a permanent tone? Defense counsel looked at her and said, you know, in all due respect to the defense counsel, their hands are tied. The fact that they've gone to law school and practiced extensively, it's the adjusters and employees who control the defense counsel. With all due respect, you guys and haven't been there. Um, and so the, def the attorney knew, and she was just falling on her sword as a good defense counsel and doing you know, her due diligence for her employer, and, uh, self insured. I'm trying to think within a week, I received an email. I've talked from the defense counsel that she had spoken to her um, people and they were going to withdraw the appeal. Subsequent to that, since then, we, they withdrew their appeal. And they're going to keep my client on section 34. And I think one of the things was my client's testimony, but also Judge Hurley's comment, you know, what do you expect me to do with this? Uh, so I think one of the difficulties is, is it, it's a difficult job for being a judge, and I would never want to be in that position, but you are dealing with people's lives. But you are applying the facts to the law. We may not like the application, but Unfortunately, it is, it is going to be what it is. Mm -hmm. With respect to her demeanor, uh, I'll agree with Attorney Gary Miller. Uh, I was somewhat surprised about some of the comments. I've never seen that. And many times I've been in your courtroom both for uh, How many cases that he had in his early seven years. To be honest with you, that couldn't even count, but it has to be upward of 20 to 30 cases. The other thing is also we have, including myself, there's five attorneys in my office, in our office, who practice comp, and we're up there on a regular basis. And we talk about it in the office, we have our office meetings, we talk about different things. And never once, once, have I heard a negative comment or criticism of Judge Hurley. And I, and there's one attorney who's been around, well, he probably should be, but he, he's been around for a long time, he's probably, he's, been four or five different boards, and, uh, but he, there's never been any comment of you all <coughs> not practicing in, up in Salem. I have the utmost respect for Judge Hurley. He uh, not only as a person, but professionally as a judge, has always been, we believe, very fair in her you know, demeanor and judgment. <coughs> let me uh, answer you said that you uh, called the county yesterday. Yes. And said you were coming in? Yes. And uh, when did you make that decision? Uh, I heard also at the board there were rumblings, and I figured, you know, I'll come up, I'll be an observer. And then I figured, let me talk to uh, Councilor Kennedy. You know, this is my first time here. I've never been here. Hopefully, it's my last. So in, nobody, all, in, all, nobody, in all due respect. Nobody asked you to come in? No. You didn't have any conversations with so usually the way it works, um, the nominee reaches out to people and asks if they'll come as witnesses. That's not the case with you. No, but I have spoken with the senior judge in the past when I did hear rumblings. Initially, I, I'm not sure how the proceedings go with the Department of Industrial Accidents. Okay, how long, let me ask you, how long ago did you hear rumblings from the chief? The chief? Uh, I wrote, well, I had a letter that I had written to uh, the senior judge in October of 2019. Uh, I heard rumblings before then. We had an opportunity to, we were talking one time about this nominee. Well, we were talking and I said, 
who I was trying to, people were talking about who's coming up for appointments, reappointments, things of that nature. And I said, I've heard rumblings about, you know, possible opposition against Judge Hurley. And Judge Hernandez said, yeah, he goes, what are your thoughts? I go, you know, I think she's great. I have no thoughts. And he said, do you mind supporting her? We need a letter. I said, no, I'd be happy to write Okay, so these rumblings you heard from who? Not names, but how many people? Two or three total. And this was back in October of 2019. Yeah. And uh, after you called the chief and said, we need a letter, you received a letter. Did you send a letter? I did. When did you send it? October 10th. Oh, you sent that to the board? Yes, oh, yeah, okay. uh, to my judge, Hernandez, I guess. I'm not sure how the procedure, procedure okay. goes. And so since October 19 until uh, yesterday, when you called Mr. Kennedy, uh, have you heard any more rumblings? No, just the same two or three people are who we're not happy. <coughs> two people that are here? Um, I didn't know about Attorney McKenna, but I did know about Attorney Lachey. You know Attorney Lachey? Oh, I know them both. Fair. Yeah. Did you call Attorney Lachey and discuss the rumblings with you? No. About Attorney McKenna. No, I really didn't, I didn't realize he was going to be speaking in opposition until I saw him from the fall. So we came over from Gary, but I didn't know that until today. So what I get from uh, these two fellows is not that they're griping about losing the decision. We we never really complain about decisions of judges. We do complain about the way we're treated by the judge, the temperament of the judge, the way he treats or she treats others, uh, the comments that are made by the judge, her attitude and demeanor on the bench. So you yourself heard rumblings, and what did those rumblings? What were they rumbling about? The, the rumblings I heard weren't as much about demeanor as the fact that they lost. In my, when people express that to me, it's, you know, it's a difficult position, and unfortunately, the burden in, in, in an industrial injury and injuries to individuals are devastating not only to the individual, their spouse, and their family. They have a ripple effect, and it's not only financial, it's physical. So it affects the whole family, not just the injured worker. And the difficulty about it is the burden is put in, under the statute, the burden is on the employee. And then the judge has to apply the fact of the law but and make a difficult decision. Right. Uh, we're not talking about so much decisions here. Right. And a lawyer is saying, I don't like the decisions of this judge. I have never heard lawyer coming up here and saying the decisions of the judge are wrong in my view, therefore you should be You never say that, right? Correct. You have no right to, neither do I, right? If I'm on the bench, half the people are going to disagree with my decisions. 50% of the time, you know, yeah. So, the, have you not known did you know that these two, you knew one of these fellows was going to be here today? I didn't know they were going to be here. I, heard, I knew they were, that one of them was in opposition to Judge Hurley. So you, you have never heard in your career that I, you know, any lawyers in the bar, the BIA bar, expressing any issues with her? And I see it firsthand, uh, her sympathy. Well, well, at least what's the individuals I represent. Well, you know, I, and I appreciate your comment that we should have all the facts, the good, bad, and the ugly. That's why we're here. We're here to protect the people of the Commonwealth and the decision to make a judgment today. But uh, in a lot of cases, I hear, I hear bitching and moaning about a judge. And I hear other people say that it's just wonderful. So it's kind of cut the balance. <laughs> right. I wasn't in the courtroom when 
this lawyer says the judge is going to be or whatever. Uh, but um, I appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Um, I missed the very beginning of that. Um, do you represent um, employees or employees? Presently, uh, I represent agent work. Four years as an assistant district attorney in Suffolk County, and I did uh, 10 to 11 years working defense counsel for insurance companies. And now, for the last 20 plus years, I represent AJ Work. Did you have cases before this case now? I think the last one I had, the hearing we just began, I spoke about earlier, did just go through their appeal. So, as far as I can remember, I'm not sure if I have any. So this is very weird to me because usually we're dealing with judges who don't come back to court every six years. The vast majority Correct. of the judges yeah. would come back. So when you come and testify for or against her, will you have cases with her in the future? Well, I, I, I am testifying in support of. Uh, I'm assuming I, I will have cases because it's a lot of the draw. I'm not sure how it works through the queue. Uh, we, yeah, I'm assuming at some point I would have cases at some point. Are you familiar with the, the uh, I'm sorry, the voice system? No, I was going to say if if I have to uh, get on that same list of accusing myself, I'd be happy to put my name on as much as I would like to. Just get Parker. <laughs> you know, as much as, I, <laughs> as much as I don't like to, because I, I, I think she's very fair. Her demeanor is very nice. She's always pleasant on time. And one of the things I think is she's very knowledgeable. She knows the workers' compensation statute very well. Um, so, but if they need be, you know, I'd be Happy to get on the list. Uh, I hate the loser as a because I think she's that means awesome because all the other people that come before us, they're not judges yet. Right. And the people that testify don't have any existing cases with them. They may in the future, but I'm not sure about the judges. I don't think it's possible. You guys are completely different for you know use of it. have you ever been before the JNC for the BIA? No. You know people that go there and testify for us or against people? Have you ever talked to anyone about that? No, I you know, like to be honest, I'm not really sure how that all works. Like Attorney McKenna said, you kind of struck him off. You know, you go in, you do your job, you work. It's like I said, it's first time I'm up here, and it's kind of an intimidating. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I'd ask you questions, but you know as much about them. Exactly. <laughs> I just want to say thanks. Thanks, 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 thanks for the pictures. <laughs> I know Councilor Juvenal said it's not about decisions. I'm not quite sure I agree with that. Uh, you know, my law firm does, we do social security cases all over the country. And when we get a case, we know who the judge is, we know the percentage, we know the national average is black, and we know that judges, oh God, some places, and we, oh, we do a lot worse than that. We're, we're a, it was a lot show McKenna goes, oh, from the get early. So my question is this. Would it be a reason? What's the song? Well, you tell me. You, you've, you've been doing workers' comp for a number of years. Generally. I mean, I can tell you, I could answer this question. Generally, what percentage, as best you can guess? Oh, that's not a tough question. I mean, I have the same judge as you know at the board. What is your, where at least you get, either 34 or 35. Yeah, I know if you're looking for 34, you get 35, sometimes you're not happy. But let's just say, to put someone on 34 or 35, what do you think the cases that you handle, not in front of this judge at this point, overall, 80%, 90%, what do you think you do? Definitely within that 80 to 90%. Okay, so most of the judges, and I agree with you, put people on comp, but don't take them off. You agree with that? Well, they said 80, 90%. Right, but I didn't understand it. Like, what percent of the okay? What what did you you answered that question? What right, you, around eighty to ninety percent. Um, but I'm not sure if you're talking about it. No, nope, I'm, I'm talking about all the all all the, the cases we that you go in front of all the judges. What's your? Well, it depends. Each region's different. I understand, talking but just about, generally, generally. About blocks, I say eighty to ninety percent. Okay. You know, you're going to be successful in getting. I got it. I got it. Eighty to ninety percent. And there's, there's a lot of, how many judges are there? 
place for what is written. Okay. So let's assume your firm keeps an keeps the statistics. Wow, we're at 88%. But Judge Hurley is at 45%. And I'm making this up, I'm just totally making it up. And I know Julieville has a different opinion. Would that be a reason? And there's 21 judges. The board, and again, this is just a hypothetical. Do you think that would be a reason why this council could vote against Judge Hurley? I guess my issue is, like I said, I've been before Judge Hurley. I understand. I've received close periods of total disability, ongoing partial disability, or just a close period of compensation, and then we have to appeal. You look at it, and it's difficult. Each case has to be looked at on its facts and whether or not the benefits are merit based on the medical opinions. So it's, you know, and it could be Judge Hurley, he gets the bad luck of the draw. It gets difficult cases. She's not, no judge is getting back. Yeah, maybe, come on. You, no, let's not go that way. No, no, no. She's been there for a number of years. She's not, all, all the bad cases aren't going to Judge Hurley. If they are, we're going to have a meeting with Judge Hernandez. I mean, come on. So, the board Basically, average, again, this is just a hypothetical, well, is 85%. Judge Hurley, he is 45. To me, that'd be a damn good reason. Not to reappoint her. I'm not saying those are the statistics. Do you agree with that? Hypothetically, yes, but I guess you, you can't go on hypothetical. You have to. No, I understand, but I'm getting to that. Okay. So now, my point is, unlike yes. Councilor Jubenville, is the fact, and I don't know this fact, I'm just throwing it out here because I, we have a different opinion here. Is her percentage, is that a fact in determining whether or not we should confirm her? I personally think it is, and I don't know her percentage, by the way. Do you think it should be? There's been a lot of factors. Should that be one of the factors? Right. I, that's what I was just going to say. It, it, I guess to agree it is a factor. Whether it's a predominant one, I don't, I don't believe so. I think there's a number of different other factors or issues that should be looked at in general other than um, decision. Okay. Well, like I said, I go to all the Social Security conferences, now, there used to be two a year, there's only one, and there's a lot of lawyers there, a thousand lawyers all over the country, uh, and we talk about these judges, oh, we complain about them, nobody wants to go in front of them, uh, and to a lot of lawyers, because we have statistics, that's the fact, I don't care if this judge has got a nice personality, a nice demeanor, treats people great, hey, if that, if, if that ratio is so off guy compared to other judges, yeah, we don't want to go in front of that judge. We think that judge is unfair. So to me, that's a major factor. Again, if it depends on how close it is. If in my hypothetical 85, 45, that's a huge, and I'm not suggesting that. I just wanted to get a sense uh, if you think this, the fact of the decision. And I know, because I did hear one of these two lawyers say, once they get the draw, the judge Hurley, they go, oh, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, do you ever do that to any judge when you get the when you get a draw? Like, oh, not anymore. Okay, not so anymore. every and there's no judge now. That's a good answer because you could go in front of them. Forget the past. I always tell my employees once an employee once an employee leaves, don't ever say anything negative about them. You should have told me before. So there's no employee. When you get, you get the draw, you're going in front of this judge, this judge. You're, yeah. you're totally fine. Um, well, I'll retract that. I apologize. I, uh, we primarily practice Lawrence, uh, Boston, Fall River, and Worcester. Lawrence. Uh, yeah, Lawrence and Lincoln. Uh, we go, there's one particular judge not mentioned that I probably would say. Oh, no. What would you say? In Boston? No, no. Oh, I, I thought you said you, I'm, you, you I, practice in Lawrence and Boston, you said? Fall River and Worcester. <coughs> right, yeah, we had a couple of great judges out in Fall River, Brenda Mule and McManus, but they're gone. Uh, there, is one, there is one judge, I, I guess I would say. Uh, okay. Fernandez is looking at you like, you crazy? Okay, uh, thank you. <laughs>
Well, he used to be one of them when he was on the bench. Yeah, they did what? Thank you. Uh, let me just let me just correct myself. I do agree with Jim Brennan on that. I didn't put a finer point. I do agree that if there was a consistency in the judge's rulings, like when I go to a district court trial, <coughs> that guy has, and has never said. <coughs> Yes, please. Uh, please. All right, first of all, and I'm not sure if 
you know, I, I, like I said, I was not involved in the building of glass. I just had to practice for it. I wanted a law firm and go home. And my life was just, I had, you know, so I, I built a glass back. I, I, do, so I do my job yeah. and I don't get into it. Well, well, political glass back politics is not exactly my stage or game, whatever you want to call it. But um, I knew early in my back in my school, it was September, October. Uh, there were certain issues with speaking with Judge Hernandez. And that's why I said, well, you know, I've always had the utmost respect for Judge Hurley. He, no, I'm not the utmost respect. I'm sorry. In okay. November, October, uh, September, October of 2019. No kidding. Okay. So I said, if, you know, if I have to, I'll be happy to write a letter. He was, no, and who was the one that said to you, said to you that it was uh, a I heard rumbling. No one called me. All this rumbling. I want a name. I don't know what rumbling. I never heard of that. The work is pumped by the very small. I'm not sure how many attorneys practice this. I see attorney McKenna, attorney Alaco, attorney Cajun, attorney Jones, and attorney Miguel Villa probably three or four times a week. And we walk by each other in a room with Jim Lyon. Everybody knows each other. It is a very small bar. And people talk. And back then, they were very supportive. And they said, People weren't happy with Judge Carlo. Uh, Other attorneys weren't happy with Judge Rowley, and we were going to try to oppose her off on her with three or four times. So these people were the rumblings to tell you and other people about this. So that inspired you to come. And I, I understand. Right. Get it. It's important. Yeah. But to understand, how did these rumblings happen? It's been over a year that her term has expired. Why all of a sudden did people think that she was coming before the governor's council when we didn't know until last week? You see my position? Okay, I try to, I'm very professional. I don't look into, I don't talk to people and say, hey, she's going to be in trouble. I don't do that, okay? I don't know anything about that. And, and I am really very pleased that we have people that come and have the courage to tell us their position. You did. He did. I want to hear as much as I can. Okay. I'm the only full time up here, and I, I work very hard and I meet with the nominees. Very important to me. So I don't know rumblings. No one's kept me to rumblings. You didn't call me, and I didn't say, oh, good. You know, it'd be good to see you or whatever. All right. I'm probably the most independent up here. I'm not a lawyer. Okay. So for 20 years, I work and investigate and talk to people. Because I don't have anyone working for me on the council. Okay? I'm not involved with certain lawyers and everything. So I have no position that's lost in me. Okay? And um, and I just want honesty, integrity, and I want judges that have compassion and empathy. <coughs> and that's what I'm looking for. But I hate to be redundant because I hear the word rumblings. What is this? This is a professional public board with the only checks and balances for the governor. And, and everybody else there knew that she was coming up. But I didn't know. Well, first of all, I can't explain this the lack of notice <laughs> internally to you. The other thing, the rumblings, I think, have been put aside now. We've had Attorney Lockheed and Attorney McKenna come out and testify. So, truthfully, from your perspective, that this is their view. We're not testifying. How we knew about it or how we got here. I think it's what's happening. Well, you chose the council to come. So, what was the reason? Because, with all due respect, I don't know any of the other councils. And as Councilor Kennedy indicated, uh, you called him. Why? I want to know. Why would you call the council? I called him, first of all, because I know it's in high school. We're friends. I still okay. live in Everett. He works in Everett. Right. Great. Um, and I just called him yesterday to tell him I was, you know, a line of call him most of my support to Judge Hurley. And that was going to be me. That's understandable. But I didn't know that. Because when you're not going to listen all of a sudden you're here and you call the counselor, I don't know what the hell means. Well, so I'm glad you put him in here. Yeah, okay. no, no, I know so, you did. Okay. Yeah. 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 So uh, I just want to, to know how we got to this point. So um, anyway, uh, how many. How many times have you approximately gone before a judge for Okay. So um, 
you've done well in cases? Yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, so in your position, you have worked on both sides. Yes. Okay. So, um, all right, in, in a scale to one to ten, how would you find the empathy? How would you? With respect to my client, seven to eight would be what we show you with respect to okay. Okay. Um, so, um, you had severely injured workers that you were doing? Yes. And, and, and how long did it take? Does it take four months to go before you got hurt? It's not just really after the, there's three stages after the company does relax. The first is the conciliation. Okay, and once you have enough materials to send it off to the administrative judge, it goes into what they call the review. They go into a conference bureau. And then it comes out, I'm not sure, I think there's six, seven judges in Boston. If there's no new judge that have never been here before in front of Judge Philly, Back to Judge Rowe. If it's a first time at the board, then it can go to any of the judges. And it's putting, I guess, into the queue of <coughs> computers. And in my understanding of it, the next available judge is assigned that case. It varies, but is it that block? It could be three or four months. And I think Chairman McKenna brought it up. I apologize, I'm not sure one of them brought up back in 2014. There was a significant backlog, I think, the five, six months. But now we're down like two. What do you do for a client during that time? You yeah, usually. <laughs> I'm going to take a break right now. Excuse me? I'm going to take a break right now. Oh, okay. Okay. People have to go back. Well, hold on. Ten minutes. Okay. Trail of fine next week.